Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and this is Addicted Fishing. If you guys are new to this channel, go down here and hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification. We aim to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you to show you how to do cool little tricks and tips and fun entertainment out here on the river. Today we're doing a quick little video. We get a lot of comments from you guys asking how to kill a fish. We're going to show you a humane, kind of decent way to go ahead and knock these fish out if you're here harvesting these hatchery fish on your local river or if you're catching wild fish somewhere in the world. So what we have here, we just got this beautiful little silver salmon on a setback Mustad Hoochie. This is an addicted product. It's one of our salmon jigs. What we're going to do initially is find a good stick or a rock, something blunt and has a little bit of weight to it. What you're going to do is aim right for the back of this fish's head, just in front of its gill plate and behind its eye. That's where its brain's located. And that's going to be the quickest and most efficient way to kill that fish so that it doesn't suffer at all once you get it here on the bank. Just like that. Give it one more just for good luck. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook that. One smart thing to do in my opinion is to keep that fish hooked through the bonking process because as soon as you unhook that fish, if you are next to the bank or you're in the boat and that thing starts flopping around, it can break rods, it can fall back into the river alive and swim away. If you bonk that fish first and he does flop, odds are he's not gonna get away from you after you've already killed that fish and you're gonna waste a really, really tasty little meal here. So. Now that we've done that, the first thing that we're gonna do initially, you wanna get this done right away. Try to take your picture fast, go ahead, get all your glory shots. But what we wanna do right away is go ahead and cut these gills while this fish is still fresh. So I'm gonna go through right under that gill plate, I'm gonna slice those gills open. You see how that blood's pumping right out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk down to the river and set it in the water for just a sec so a lot of that blood can actually work out of the meat. So to get the most amount of blood out of this fish, you can see how as soon as I hit the water, it keeps that blood from coagulating inside the fish. So it goes back into its natural element so that blood doesn't start getting, getting thick and not coming out of the gills. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna roll her upside down. I'm gonna put my fingers right along that lateral line and I'm gonna kinda shake that tail and make a couple of different passes through that fish's body, pushing that, that blood up to its gills from its tail, just like so. You can see every time I do that, another big flume of blood comes out of there and that lets that fish get blood free because that blood is the first thing that freezer burns and it's one of the more fishy tastes that you can have in a salmon. So you want to make sure to get a lot of that blood. And this is also a hen, so you want to get a lot of those, a lot of that blood out of those eggs. I'm gonna do one more pass here. Beautiful. Now once you stop seeing those big flumes of blood come out of those gills, what we like to do is our next step is we're gonna gut this fish. Just to kind of show you guys the full 360 look at what we do every time we kill one of these fish. And this one's a hen, so we're gonna save these eggs. So we're gonna wanna do this in a nice clean place so that we're not getting sand or mud or dirt all over our eggs here. We're gonna take our knife, go right up the anus, right in between those two fins here. What I like to do when I get to this point so that I'm not sawing into my eggs is just do one quick little rip, just like so. And it goes through that bone in between those two anal fins. We go all the way up to the bottom of its jaw, just like so. Again, taking good care of these eggs here. We're gonna want these for a later date. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the throat of that fish, right here in by its heart, up by its gill plate. I'm gonna make a little incision right on its throat and pull the rest of those guts out just like so. The last step in gutting these fish is you run your knife right down this lateral bone right along its spine where it holds that last little spot of blood. Just like so, you guys can see that in there. And I'm gonna run my fingers right down through there, pulling all those that blood and that coagulated material out of there. Give her a nice rinse. Just like so. See, nice and clean on the inside, ready to go on ice in your cooler at the bottom of the boat and get filleted at the boat ramp. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna actually take this fish back to the ramp, fillet it out for you guys and show you how the process goes to get this thing in the bag and get it home. All right, everybody, so we've made it back to the boat ramp now. We're gonna complete this process of killing a fish and go ahead and show you how to fillet out your fish and get it ready for the dinner table. We got done today, luckily we had couple opportunities to get a couple more beautiful fish here but the one that we killed earlier remember we have it gutted we bonked this fish ethically and as fast as possible as soon as we got it out of the water so it didn't suffer at all 
we went ahead and gutted it out, put those eggs aside, made sure that fish was good and bled before we opened it up. And now we have it here on our filet away fish mats. So these are a really neat little product made by a filet away. You can find them online or on our site at Dick and Fishing. But the filet away fish mats are a really, really nice tool for being able to fillet these fish out without them sliding around and allowing you to make a really nice cut on these fish without missing any meat and leaving any of that valuable, tasty stuff on the bone that we don't want to leave behind. So what I have here is my 10 inch Gerber filet knife. This is one of my favorite knives that I've found yet, mainly because of the sharpening stone that they have on the back side of the carrying case which is revolutionary in my idea because you can constantly get a good edge on that blade before you go and fillet that fish again so I put a good edge on my blade sharpened it up already got my fillet away fish mat like I said before and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and be very careful and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how you want to use the technique of filleting this fish so we've already gutted it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna lift that pectoral fin up I'm gonna keep my blade at about a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna cut right down behind the gill plate here just like so, one nice little slide through there and the job is done. Once I've got that, you see how my blade's pointed up towards the head of that fish. What I'm gonna do is once I find the backbone right about there, I go about an inch and a half deep into this little fish. I'm gonna turn that blade and go right along with the spine of that fish. Keeping that blade with a semi downward angle and, and parallel with the backbone the whole way down is going to be key to making sure that you get every little piece of meat off of that backbone. So I have my cut started here. I'm going to wash my fingers. I'm going to keep that blade pointed perfectly parallel with the back side of that fish. I'm actually going to stick my finger up in that fish's gills and I'm going to slowly make short about six inch pushes through that fish, slowly sliding right along the spine and keeping that blade, again, right along the bone of that fish so that we don't miss any meat here. And as I flip that over, you guys will see. And you see the importance of keeping your blade pointed down towards the backbone of that fish. It goes right along with it and it cleans off all that meat so that you guys aren't missing any of this tasty, tasty morsel that we have here of a coho salmon. So now that I've completed this side, we're gonna go to the little more complicated side. I'm gonna have this fish's belly pointed towards me here Again, making the same incision that I made before, 45 degree angle right behind the gill plate. Once I find that backbone, I'm gonna slide it down with the backbone just like that. And again, keep that blade parallel with the backbone, putting it about a quarter degree angle down towards the fish's spine, slowly sliding that knife back and forth and keeping a perfect fillet right off of that fish. So you guys see how little meat is left on this bone. What you can do if you're if you're really wanting to use every little bit of the fish, you can cut these collars off. You can cut this meat off right here in these front fins. You can also take a spoon or a fork and take all that meat off of the spine, which we're not gonna do today. But it's a good way to use every little piece of meat that comes on these fish, especially if you haven't caught a lot that day. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these rib bones. And this is probably the more complicated part of this method. I'm gonna stick, what I usually, usually like to use is any kind of knife I like to use my little Gerber knife here or any kind of fork or utensil that you can hold down on that meat so that you can make a nice flush cut on that fish to get those rib bones out. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna make my first little incision here, cutting right under these bones. And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to see the edge of my blade going through those rib bones so that I can actually tell that I'm not missing any meat or that I'm not grabbing any excess meat as I make that cut. So I'm gonna make one small incision there all the way down, I like to take that back off, fold that knife kind of facing upwards towards the sky, and one little slice there, and there you have it. A perfect filet. Another thing that I like to do that's not key and it's not imperative to getting this job done is I'll take this, another, this little peck fin here, I'll point it straight up in the air, holding the edge of it, and I'll slice right along that bone that you see there and get that last little fin out of there so that you don't have to deal with it while you're cooking. So there it is. There's our filet. Absolutely beautiful, perfect, ready for the smoker, ready for the grill, or any other way that you're gonna wanna eat that. What I'm gonna do here is show you guys how to do the other side now, which is a little more technical because you're gonna be cutting back towards yourself, but it's the same nonetheless. Again, making that small incision, you wanna be able to see that blade through those rib bones. One slow slice all the way through, and do it twice. Just like so. And our job is done here. Two perfect fillets. 
All right, everybody, and I hope that simplified it a little bit better and make a lot of you guys feel comfortable with going out and effectively killing these fish and taking them home for the dinner table. It's a luxury that a lot of us have all over the world and we take for granted sometimes, so making sure you do it right, humanely, and taking good care of your fish and the meat throughout the day is gonna make every bit of your effort out on the river better and more valuable to you, the fishermen. So again, thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. If you liked this video, be sure to go down here and hit that like button. Be sure to comment below with whether you've ever filleted a fish or whether you've ever killed one yourself. We wanna hear it from you guys. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials that you guys wanna see, please let us know. And we appreciate you tuning in. You guys stay fishy, be sure to subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and we'll see you out there.